Okay. Hello, everybody. I'm Barbara Drazga with Bundle Masterclass. I've got a nickname in uh, the online community called The Deal Diva. Um, you can go ahead and follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash Deal Diva. And um, you can post any questions you have about selling on Amazon, about bundling, uh, about anything selling on Amazon related, or even not just Amazon. We talk about some other stuff too, selling on other platforms. It's basically an e-commerce site, uh, private labeling, wholesale, so you can go ahead and post questions in there and engage and help other people out in that group too. So anyway, I'm Barbara Drazga and I know we have a lot of new people in here. Maybe you guys, some of you have not heard of me. You came from um, some people who were uh, promoting my bundle masterclass like Bob Willie and Sean Mayo and Duncan McPherson. Uh, thank you everybody, uh, Ashlyn and Anita. So I'm Barbara Drask and I've been selling uh, online since 2002 and I've been an Amazon seller and I am an Amazon, active Amazon seller since 2015. I own a couple of different businesses and one of the businesses is a bedding company. And so I sell bed sheets and blankets and pillows, etc. And um, a couple of years ago I decided, well, you know, Amazon's got a lot of customers. Maybe I should figure out how to sell my stuff on Amazon. And that's how my Amazon journey started. I kind of came at it backwards. I had a successful company and then I decided to add Amazon to the mix. So I have a little bit of a different approach to, um, to sourcing and to selling on Amazon. And I'd love to share some of that with you tonight. So let me just go ahead and share a screen. I've done a, put up a small presentation for you guys and we will just get started and walk you through. Before I share a screen, I'm just checking the chat one more time. Can everybody hear me? Please say yes in the chat. And go ahead and make sure you've got water and a piece of paper and a pen, good stuff. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get started. I'm gonna share the screen and dig right in. So tonight, we are talking about the joy of bundling. And um, again, I gave you a little bit of my background. Uh, I'm, I'm not new to selling online. Uh, Amazon since 2015. Right now, my um, number one sourcing um, is wholesale. And then I've also added private label to the mix in the past year, having gone to China in April for a dozen days and six trade shows. And uh, so I'm now starting to import my own products as well. Now I hear somebody who just came on who sounds like uh, they've got something going on in the background. I need you to, everybody to mute themselves, please. Uh, now I'm gonna um, take away your ability to unmute yourself. I love y'all, but you should just listen to me right now, okay. There we go, okay, so you're all muted, so just raise your hand in the chat if you have to go potty. I mean, <laughs> okay, so uh, bundling. Um, bundling is basically a form of private label, if you think about it. So let's talk a little bit, let's just talk about what we're gonna cover on the webinar tonight. So there's a lot, I, I teach a lot about bundling, a lot of nuances, uh, a lot of, uh, I really dig deep and niche, so I'm gonna cover what I can on the webinar, and here are the, the six most important things that I'm gonna kinda of not dig in too deep, but give you an ideas on, so you can leave this webinar with some actual ideas and some things that you can start thinking about differently in your business. So one, tonight we're gonna to cover the importance of owning your Amazon listing. Why is that more becoming more and more important in Amazon's world? The importance of niche market research before sourcing product. Now I know y'all have learned um, a lot about sourcing product uh, and you start your research with the product. Well, I teach a customer centric approach. So flip flop that upside down. Uh, before I go sourcing any product, I do niche market research, and I'll show you a little bit about what I do um, as we go forward. Importance of doing competitive research. We all, we all understand that uh, we have to kind of know that there's enough room and a space for, for us in our businesses, so importance of doing competitive research. How to create an added value product. I'll show you an example of one a little bit later. I've got a live bundle here that I was working on last night, um, the sample of, for uh, to outsource it, so I can kind of show you, uh, at, this, is what, this is what it looks like live using wholesale and factory direct sourcing. So how to source. But really, guys, the sourcing part is the easiest part of creating a product bundle. The things that come before sourcing the product are so much more important to do because if you source the wrong product because you haven't done the previous research, then you're gonna have a dead product. And then what are the elements of a winning listing? I'm hoping that we can at least get to a little bit of the winning listing towards the end. So I'm just gonna, I'm going to talk faster than I normally fast do uh, so that I can get a ton of content out to you tonight. And I appreciate your engagement in the chat. I won't be able to see what you're saying right away, but go ahead and put your questions in the chat. 
So why is it important to own your Amazon listing? Um, so first, scammers and fakers and liars, oh my, a couple months ago, we had, I don't know if you guys experienced it, but there was this influx of just these fake accounts coming on all of my listings and hundreds of thousands, literally hundreds of thousands of other listings where, you know, if you're selling a $25 product, there were all these new account, new account, new seller, new seller, selling it for $3.95. And they were getting our sales, but the way that it worked is they, they were, it was, it was fake so that they would close down the account right after they got a payment from Amazon, but they would uh, get on hundreds of thousands of listings. So, you know, four or five bucks a pop, um, they're making a ton of money in that two week period. So thank goodness Amazon got rid of most of them, put in mechanisms in place to keep that from happening to the extent that it did and also put mechanisms in place so that we can report things like that. You just don't know what's going to happen on Amazon's marketplace. It is their marketplace. Make no mistake. It is, it is their sandbox. They're allowing us to play in it based on their rules. So uh, building bundles is basically an easy entry private label. And I had a message from a lady earlier this week who said she didn't want to do private label. It was way too complicated. She was terrified to do it. She was afraid because she saw all these people with horror stories and, and it required forty, fifty thousand dollar investment. And she was, she had all this negative energy around private labeling. Um, so I gave, I'd like to offer a different perspective. Bringing your own product to the Amazon marketplace, regardless of what form that product takes, if it's something you've manufactured yourself, if it's something you've white labeled from an existing supplier, or if it's a bundle of products you put together that you put your brand on, um, that's private labeling. Basically, you're bringing your product to Amazon's marketplace. And there are all different levels of private label. Yes, you can bring in containers, but it's not necessary. And bundling is a part, a way to maybe test out a market in order to ease into larger buys of a specific product or products for a niche. So Amazon is tending now, it seems to me they're tending to favor brand owners more. So instead of people who are doing RA and buying a couple of things and throwing them up on Amazon and, and hopping on somebody else's listing, um, which could have a different set of problems than people uh, than brand owners who are bringing their own product to the marketplace. And those problems include um, inauthentic claims, bad packaging, etc. So Amazon's going to be favoring private label sellers more and more. So I see somebody came on and um, we're going to just stop their video here. If you come on, uh, please be sure to mute yourself and not turn on your video. So inauthentic claims. Uh, we all know what those are, right? A lot of sellers get shut down because somebody has complained uh, that, let's say you're selling you know, a, a set of these mugs uh, and it's branded and there are eight other sellers on it and somebody can complain that the mugs you're selling are inauthentic they're, or they're, they're not that brand. And you don't have control when that happens and it could be a mistake, it could be a customer who didn't understand or it could be a competitor trying to get you off their listing. So it's kind of the wild, wild west selling online sometimes. And I like to make sure that my business is protected in as many ways as I can. And one of those ways is by owning my listing. So, and of course, when you own a listing on Amazon, you control the listing details. So you control the photographs and you can tweak the, um, the title and the description and the bullet points and the keywords and really optimize your listing and then drive traffic to that listing and look at the outcome from doing like a pay-per-click ad, look at the outcome of that ad to determine what else you can change and improve in your listing or on your product. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to, I know I'm going fast, so take notes, but I will have a replay up so you can you know, like pause me mid-sentence and, uh, and uh, take more notes. So I'm gonna take a look at the chat here and see if anybody has any questions. Everybody say, yep, 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 yep. Yes, thank you very much. Not hearing anything. Is anybody else having a problem? Say, yes, I can hear you in the chat. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, okay, so awesome. So if you cannot hear me, you may have muted your computer because <laughs> it looks like everybody else can hear me. So I'm gonna go back to the, does anybody, is everybody clear on what I've covered so far? Yes, 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 yes. Can I keep going? Awesome, okay, let's keep going. I'm gonna share the screen again and we will just dig right in. So, 
the, you understand the importance, importance now of owning your Amazon listing in some way, shape, or form. And tonight we're talking about using bundles to do that. Excuse me. Okay. Let's talk about, now, a few minutes ago I said that I have a different approach to selling things online. So a lot of us are taught when we enter the Amazon's world that we start with a product and we scan it to see if it's already on Amazon's marketplace, what it's selling for, how fast it's selling, how much competition, and how much money we can make on it, right? That's the model that we learn. Nothing wrong with that model. I believe in learning different ways of doing things so that you can always improve. It's basically having a toolbox, right? So um, you just wanna have more tools in your toolbox. I see somebody asking a question in the chat. Just gonna switch over here. Okay, Todd can't hear anything. Um, so just um, unmute your computer <laughs> to anybody who can't hear me. Okay, unmute your computer. So let's go, let's just go right back to share screen and so know your market before you source. Um, I call it customer centric approach to sourcing or, or to, to, um, to researching before I, I buy anything before I source anything. I want to find out it, how big the market is for those keywords or for those passions or problems uh, and how many people are searching for those in that particular niche. And I call it passions and problems. So you want to identify passions, passionate groups of people who are passionate about something and then also uh, common problems that groups of people have, niche people have. So it, a great way to, to learn some of these, especially the problems out, is just watch television. And I'm not a big proponent of television. I don't have cable. Turned it off a couple of years ago. Um, but what you can do is start watching the commercials on TV because these advertisers understand the importance of um, saying things like, are you afraid you won't have money left for retirement? Get a reverse mortgage. So there's a problem, and then they give a solution for it, right? Or um, are you afraid that you, you won't be able to run around with your grandchildren? Take this pill and feel better, right? Pharmaceutical companies are great at identifying problems, 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 and then ta -da, here's a solution, right? So that's an idea of uh, identifying uh, problems, that, common problems that people have or passions that people have. And then you want to conduct deep keyword research and not just on Amazon, but you definitely want to look on Amazon to get an idea of, of what is being sold on Amazon for those keywords. But you want to use tools like um, ubersuggest.io, uh, Anita Breeze recommended that one to me last week. Uh, Merchant Words, if you don't have that yet, um, there, you can go, go grab it. It's a monthly subscription, but it tells you monthly search volume for search terms. Um, there are a lot of, uh, you can do Google Trends, uh, Google Keyword Research, right? So you want, to, you want to examine the size of a specific market. And then you want to look for niches that you can combine high volume keywords. So example, just a, a quick example off the top of my head. Uh, let's say we have people who love unicorns um, and they also love skulls. There's actually a niche market of people who are like goths and they like black and skulls and skeletons and zombies, but they also, also like pink, pink fluffy unicorns. Now those are both pretty high volume keywords. So if you could put together a bundle that addressed the passion of those that particular niche market, or let's try another one. How about uh, people who ride motorcycles and they also like skulls? So if you had a bundle package with images of skulls on products that are related to somebody who loves riding a motorcycle, right? Then you've got motorcycle, um, biker, and uh, skull, crossbones. You've got this, this combination of keywords that could increase the, uh, the value of your listing and your product from a search standpoint. Okay, now I know I'm covering uh, a lot of, of breadth and not a lot of depth. I wanna give you um, a, a feel for the types of things that I teach in the Bundle Masterclass. This is basically an overview, but I'm gonna give you as much overview as I can in an hour. And then when you're ready, you can go to bundlemasterclass.com. It's open, the card is open for one week. Um, the registration ends on August 31st, uh, 2017. And then we start the class on September 1. It's 30 days, but you have lifetime access. So let's move on to the next topic. Let's brainstorm. Okay, I see a lot of people putting stuff in the chat. I'll switch over there right now. But here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to think about things that people are passionate about. 
So it could be frogs. I'm just plucking something off my desk. I have this little crystal frog on my desk. He's so adorable. How cute is he, right? So there are a lot of people who are passionate about frogs. Uh, think of other animals like owls. But what else are people passionate about? Um, teddy bears. And I don't want I don't want to stick in the stay in the animal genre. What else? Are, how about bicycling? How about hobbies? So just here's your homework for right now because I want I want you to feel engaged and really get some value right now out of this webinar. Put in the chat what things you you're passionate about. Your family and friends are passionate about. Your neighbors are passionate about. Your coworkers are passionate about. So I'm going to get and stop the share and look over here in the pest croquet, music, knitting, photography, teacups, ooh, making jewelry, dogs. Yes, and how cool is dogs, right? Because there are sub niches within the dogs market. How about um, small dogs? How about wiener dogs? There are people passionate about a specific breed of dog, and they're all over the place. I mean, uh, there's so many breeds of dogs, and there are these subgroups of people who are passionate about that particular dog. Fishing. How about, there's different kinds of fishing. Now, I'm not an angler. I understand it's not called fisher person. I did that once on a webinar. I called fisher people, fisher people, and boy, and I, get, I get heckled. So I'm not an angler, but I understand there's fly fishing, there's deep water fishing. That's about the extent of my knowledge of fishing, so I'm not going to pretend I know what I'm talking about, but think about uh, the needs for that particular passion. For the, the, for the person who loves fly fishing, you, you have to sell them specific things for fly fishing, right? Okay, so what else? Uh, dog, we got all sorts of dogs in here. Awesome, okay. Love skulls and eyeballs. Yes, that's a whole, um, you know, like there's a goth market and people, um, one market that I'm building out is um, uh, uh, steampunk. That is a passionate market. I still don't understand it entirely, but I'm in the middle of my, my product or my, my market research on the, the um, steampunk market, but what a cool, interesting market that is, right? Uh, what else? Pumpkins, coloring books for out, pit bulls, making color books, holidays, Barbie, yay, cooking gemstones. There you go. Macro photography. That's an interesting niche. It's not just photography. How about people who just like doing still lifes or people who just like doing action photography? Those are, those are really um, stamp collecting. How about um, stamp collecting that niche it down even more? Like stamp collecting between a certain time frame or uh, how to how to sell your stamp. Uh, stamp I don't know much about stamp collecting either. So. Um, okay, so Todd says, too bad Legos are restricted. So I don't know that I agree with that. Okay, so if you look at it from my perspective, when you say too bad Legos are restricted, I say, okay, well, let's ask some better questions. What is it about Legos that people are passionate about? Why do they like Legos? They like things they can put together. They like um, maybe building out like a little diorama with, right? They like building giant structures. So now you take what I just said and you, you discover new niche markets off of brainstorming. So I encourage you to switch your mindset from looking at what you can't do to looking at possibilities and opportunities, okay? Spatulas, okay guys, all right, garlic presses. I could probably, I could find a, a niche for garlic presses. I bet you guys can too, right? Hey Scott, I'm just gonna take you off the video. Thank you, sir. Marvel Comics, yeah, people who go to Comic-Cons. I stumbled upon a Comic-Con. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on, and I went to LA, I was going to one of my suppliers and picking up bedding, and I'd driven a truck in, or I, I flew in, I rented a truck and was driving it back, and I didn't realize that Comic-Con was going on, and uh, I couldn't find a hotel room. I had to actually sleep in the truck at a truck stop, believe it or not. And there were people in and out of these hotels. Every hotel I went into looking for a room, they're pretty fanatical about all sorts of things related to comic books. And that is a world I do not understand. But you can reach, research it, right? Coin collecting, building things. Uh, building things is a great one because, Lisa, you could take that building things niche as, okay, create a kit for building XYZ, fill in the blank. And you just have a bunch of kits for building a specific, you know, it could be, uh, well, I don't know. I'll, I'm going to let you guys brainstorm. I don't want to give you all the answers because I want to encourage you to learn how to think about niche markets, cloth diapers, breast, breastfeeding. Hey, Ian, who would buy cloth diapers? What else would they, why are they interested in cloth diapers? Because they're environmentally friendly. Um, maybe they're better for their kids' skin, um, less allergy-related issues, right? So if you dig deeper into what that market is and why they'd be interested in niche diapers, 
then you can create a whole line of products based on the passions of that market to address why they would buy cloth, diapers, and related products to solve that passion. Does that make sense? Okay, in a ruck with bedding supply. Okay, I'm not sure what you're saying, but okay, so does everybody kind of get a feel for what I did there? That was a throw you in the deep end kind of brainstorming thing. But it's all about finding passions and problems first and spending a lot of time doing deep market research first to identify passions and problems. And the more niche you can get, the better because you'll have less, less competition and um, you'll be able to really hone in on, on what's, what somebody's passionate about and why they're passionate about it. So I'm gonna go back to share screen and keep going. So that was fun. I hope you guys had fun doing it. I do a lot of that in the bundle masterclass. Uh, I always have um, things like uh, things like we just did where I give you homework to go do and then share on the Facebook group, the private Facebook group. And then we get these brainstorming sessions going on the Facebook group. And we have a lot of fun doing it. Uh, so I, I give you homework so that um, you can engage uh, the learning, the learning strategy that I engage for myself because I, I take a lot of courses and I go to a lot of events is uh, I learn something and implement, then learn, then implement, then learn and implement. So I've actually incorporated uh, that method of learning into the Bumble Masterclass so that you don't just go through and take the whole class and then you're like, okay, I'm completely overwhelmed. What do I do now? So the way that my lessons are set up is that I teach you something and then I give you um, an exercise. I don't want to call it homework because that's too much like work. My exercises are fun. I give you an exercise that you can go try out in your own business. Okay, before we go on to the next module. So let's take the next one. Competitive research. So now you've done a little bit of you've done a little bit of research on um, on a niche market that you want to look look after, like pit bulls. Let's say somebody had mentioned pit bulls in there, or um, could be poodles, miniature poodles. That's even more of a niche market, right? Then you want to dig in to find out what your competitors are selling and why they're selling it. So of course you're going to start searching on Amazon um, for keywords related because you've done some keyword research, right? Using those tools I just mentioned a couple of slides ago. So now you've got a list of keywords and you'll have a, I give you a bundle planner. So every time you gather information about bundle ideas, keywords, or products, there are sections in this planner that you just kind of fill out. And that way you don't lose that information and become overwhelmed. It's all in writing. So you go to Amazon, you start typing in your keywords. And I know you guys have noticed when you type a keyword in Amazon, uh, it drops down a list of uh, other words that come after that keyword, and that's called predictive search. So that's basically Amazon telling you what people are searching for on Amazon's marketplace. And you just start capturing that information and putting it into your bundle planner. Then you go on Google and you Google the same thing. Because when you, when you use Google to do some competitive research, you can see what's being sold on other marketplaces, what products are being sold, what bundles are being sold, uh, and that, that will give you even more ideas of things that you can bring to that particular niche. And it'll also, when you Google uh, a niche market like uh, miniature poodle lovers, you'll find associations, you'll find groups that these people, a lot of these passionate people are in, so that as you go, when you, further in the course, I teach you how to do uh, pay-per-click ads, and also how to advertise for free and market for free to these passionate groups of people. So you just want to grab the, the website addresses for um, these groups and these associations for your niche markets, your, your niche niche markets, and put them in the bubble planner, so you can cycle back around later when you've got your products done, your, your uh, bundles up, and then you can start promoting it off of Amazon. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm so excited about the bundling that I can't, um, sometimes I got, that's why I have to have slides. It keeps me on track. Okay, so you want to identify what's being sold on Amazon for your keywords, and then you want to take a look at your sales volume for products in your niches, and there's so many wonderful tools out there. Um, I use Scope for keyword research. I use a couple of different tools for keyword to see what my competitors are using on their, key, on their listings for keywords. Jungle Scout, um, the Viral Launch guys have one. I forget the name of it, but it's, um, go to Viral, just Google Viral Launch. I think it's Market Intelligence, that's it. Uh, and, there are, and there's a Unicorn Smasher. There are a lot of different tools out there that you can um, use to find out what the profitability of is of products and what the search volume and the sales volume is on products. And you guys, are a lot of you are probably already doing stuff on Amazon and you're already advanced enough to know how to do that level of research, right? 
So you want to identify the holes in the market because now that you've done product research and you have a list of what people are looking for that meet their passion or their problem, you can identify areas where your competitors are not offering a product on Amazon to meet that passion or that need. Then you want to look at some of the top selling products um, for that niche and you want to identify weaknesses in the product and weaknesses in the listing. So you wanna look at the reviews and see what people are saying that, boy, I love this product, but I wish it had X, Y, Z. Now that's an opportunity for you. To, and on the Bundle Planner, there's a, an area for weaknesses where you can just type in, okay, it's missing this, they wanna see that, it has too much of this, the quality is not good enough. So now you're starting building out value propositions and, and ideas for added products to your bundle. Okay, I'm gonna switch back over real quick before going next to the next slide and see where we're at. Can you guys all hear me? Um, soaps in a truck, kids parties. Okay, I guess we start with the why, Eve Baker. Yes, you always start with the why, not the what. And if you think about it, I'm gonna get a little, gonna get a little preachy on you here, but in any communication we have, whether it's with a wholesale supplier, or with customers or with our own family members or um, our virtual assistants or people who work with uh, co-workers it's not about um, beating somebody over the head with your message and what you're trying to give them to convince them that they want it right if you ask people why first then you can start understanding what their motivation is their needs and then you can communicate with them from um, from a, a heart basically of being of service if you find out what's important to them, then you can say, hey, look, I would love to help you. you know, how can I help you? How can I help you? And then would this solve your problem? And if not, what can I do to make it better? Right? So when you start by asking why in any communication, um, it's, it's going to be a much more meaningful communication for both parties. Does that make sense? I think it was Brian Tracy. Uh, I might be wrong, quoting the wrong person, but it's... Um, the quote is, uh, oh, now I just lost it at the top of my head. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. So if you apply that concept, and I don't, I, I think it was Brian Tracy. Uh, help me out, guys. If any of you recognize that quote, seek first to understand, and then to be understood. And I think it might have been in thinking, was it thinking, girl? Oh, gosh, I'm like, Stephen Covey. Thank you. Yes, it was Stephen Covey. Yes. So thinking, grow rich. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. So if you apply that, um, to your your business in general and I, I almost said sourcing but it's really about doing the niche market research first then you'll be able to to bring to um, your customers Amazon's customers product that they want already you don't have to beat them over the head to convince them to want it you just have to make it something that's absolutely irresistible by creating a bundle that so over delivers they can't help but hit the buy now button Okay, preach over. I'm gonna shoot back over here to, hey, do you guys have any questions before I go, I switch back to the presentation? There's always a quote to unquote. Someone probably already said it, you were just re-saying it. Yes, I'm definitely not going to take credit for somebody else's quote, um, but it, it is a quote that sticks with me. Seek, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Okay, all right guys, I am gonna switch back over to the presentation and let's just keep going. I know you're probably a little overwhelmed because I'm going fast. But it's okay, I'm gonna have a replay and make sure that um, you get as much value out of this as you can. So we talked about competitive research. Uh, the next module is make your bundle irresistible, right? So I see a lot of folks who they, there's nothing wrong with this, but they just, they go to the dollar store and they toss three items together and they put it up. But they haven't done their market research. They're still looking at the product first. And there's nothing wrong with going to the dollar store and getting product and, and getting product ideas. Talk about niche market ideas. Go visit a dollar store or a bookstore. And there's just some great, great places you can walk into any big box store and get ideas for niche markets, right? But if you just throw up a bundle that anybody can go to the dollar store, source the same stuff and throw up, you're not really adding value to your customer. You're not really bringing a unique product to Amazon's marketplace that nobody else can go jump on your listing, right? So that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about making your bundle irresistible and by creating an added value experience. I know some of my Bundle Masterclass students are in the chat. Uh, I don't know if any of you remember that multiple times I say in some of the modules, um, what do we want them to say when they see our listing? You guys remember? 
shut up and take my money. That's what we're going for. So when we create a bundle, we, we are going to know, we are, we are going to know after doing our customer research exactly what's going to meet their passion or solve their problem. Because we've done so much deep customer research, we can't help but be in the hearts and the minds of that customer. So now when they see our listing, when you give an added value experience, we say, look, we understand your passion is X, Y, Z, Z, and we're also going to throw this in for you. Then they're going to say, shut up and take my money. They're more likely to hit the buy button than a competitor that's just thrown three things in a poly bag and tossed it up there without doing any market research, without understanding that niche market. Does that make sense? I'm going to switch back over here and see what you guys are saying in the chat. So do you tell us in the training and what all tools or add-ons we need? Oh my gosh, yes. There's an entire tools resource section. This is just a, like a glossing over as much as I can fit in one hour webinar for you guys. But every single thing that I'm talking about tonight, I have an entire deep dive lesson on, if not multiple lessons. I also have interviews with um, people like uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff Cohen from Scope, for example, and the Ace Inspector guys, Lil Rempel and uh, Tyler. And I, I bring in subject experts for whatever it is they're really good at, and then I make them offer a discount on their services, and that's all in the Bundle Masterclass. But I don't want, I don't want to, um, I want to make sure that I get content to you in this webinar as quick, as quickly as possible. Um, so I'm not sure, let's see what else, training tools we need. Yes, didn't, is that, uh, okay. Where do you do your market research? So that was, um, in, i.e. talking to your niche customer. So you can do that. Uh, so Ian, I, I love your question. Where do you, where do you go for market research talking about your niche customer? And you can go into forums. You can go into Reddit. You can go into Facebook groups. Go find some niche Facebook. Go find it. I challenge you for whatever passion you put in the chat tonight, go find a niche Facebook group. I guarantee you there is one. Look for a Facebook group or a Facebook page for, uh, or a group. Go to a group because you want groups of people who are talking about their passion. Go to uh, Miniature Poodles and see how many you find, okay? Uh, thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. Uh, Bob says Barbara will over-deliver. Oh, the training is awesome. I just love the face. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Lisa is one of my star pupils. She's uh, my, it's not my. You know what? Any, any training is worthless if you don't do anything with it. And... I am honored that like Lisa and whoever else is in here from uh, the bundle masterclass, my master bundle uh, graduates, uh, you've, you've all taken action because we all buy courses and then they go on the shelf. I've done it too. And we don't get around to them. But when you take action on any training that you get, when you implement it uh, and you make it happen in your business, especially now, you know, we've got this little bubble of a few weeks here to get stuff in for Q4 to take advantage of that craziness in, in you know, selling season. Right? When you take action on whatever it is you choose to learn, um, that's what I applaud. Not because you're following me or you're doing what I'm telling you to do or anybody else. It's when you take action, that's when amazing magical things happen in your business and your life. I just got on a soapbox again. I'm sorry. Let me switch back to that. <laughs> I'll let you guys hang out in the chat and answer each other's questions. I'm going to go back to the presentation to make sure I'm getting through all of my slides for you. So make your bundle irresistible. So your initial problem and passion research are going to reveal what your customers' wants and needs are. Make it unique. So that's, that's kind of a um, general term here, make it unique. So I'm going to give you a real live, I just started doing this one last night. So what I'll do when I, uh, after I finally decided on products for a bundle, um, then I will do one sample bundle and I'll videotape putting it together. And then I'll send the videotape to um, some I have different people who put my bundles together, and I'll say, this is exactly how I want it. Because it's not just throwing things in a poly bag for me. There, there are different things I do with putting my bundles together that creates a higher perceived value when the customer opens up that box. So I'm going to show you the bundle that I was working on last night. They are hand puppets. Now you notice, no matter which way you put this, Three of the hand puppets will be staring you in the face. So when they open the box, no matter how the box is positioned, three of these little guys are going to be staring them in the face. I know that is a level of detail that most people don't go through, but I'm a little bit obsessive and compulsive. And again, I'll, somebody else's quote is, how you do one thing is how you do everything. I believe attention to detail and the difference between ordinary and extraordinary is that little extra. So I go that little extra. I want them to have the experience when they open this up, they see 
their cute little animal staring at them. Okay, so when I said make it unique, here's what we did with this bundle. This is six hand puppets, and I can just show you here. Here's one of the hand puppets, it's really cute, right? Da, 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 da. And in considering what am I gonna put together with these hand puppets? Now here's some things I considered. I thought, okay, I can go to AliExpress and I can buy a bunch of finger puppets. I thought, okay, will that really add value? Or is it just like putting stuff in a poly bag and hoping people will be happy with it? I thought, you know what? They've already got their fingers in the puppets. Can't use my fingers to put the finger puppets on. I thought, well, the kids could use the finger puppets, but what if they're too small and the kid eats it, so there's a safety issue? So I didn't feel comfortable putting finger puppets in with this. And I thought, okay, if I'm getting these puppets and I'm a parent or a grandparent and I'm reading the story to my kids at night with these puppets and I'm acting out what the story characters are saying, right? What else can we put with this? Maybe we could put a guide on puppeteering. Maybe we could create a bundle and like take a certain portion of these and bundle it with um, therapy for kids who have autism, right? How to communicate with your autistic child through puppeteering. Now I can hire someone to create, um, to create a guide that I can include, a physical guide I can include with this. So another thing that I did with this is I developed an adoption certificate. Now I know it's backwards here, but, and, and I tested this out. I just printed this last night. Uh, Staples sent me a $10 off anything, no minimum order coupon. So I ran up to Staples and I found this beautiful cardstock uh, paper that has this lovely um, certificate. It's like gold and everything on sale for four bucks for 15 of them. And then I found these little labels on sale for a package of 60 for six, six bucks. And it basically, I bought um, 30, 30 of these guys finished for $3 after my $10 off coupon. And then I just print it out. I created it in Word, adoption certificate, and I put congratulations, you're now the, um, you've just adopted, and I make them put their little name in there, right? And then I let them name each of the animals. Because at first I was gonna name each of the animals, and I thought, well, what would bring more value to the people who get this? If their child could name the animal, right? Wouldn't that be more valuable to the parent and the child than me naming the animals? And then I just put this beautiful cold seal on it and I made up an, a, a certified by the Puppet Adoption Association, right? So do you think anybody else has this? No, because I just did it myself. Now, of course, I'm going to have to scale this. If this bundle works, I'm going to send in 30 bundles. If this bundle works, now I need to find a way to scale this, right? But that's easy peasy and we cover that in the course. So anyway, this is an idea for value add. So what I, and then what I do, because I've got the, the bag of the, right, I've got the, the puppets. I put this, now notice, on the front of the bag, see I've got the stickers and the, um, uh, the suffocation label on the back of the bag, because I don't want this to be obscured by any stickers, right? And then what I'll do on the back of the bag is I'll take this and slide it in so that when they open, if they turn over the package, they see the adoption certificate on one side, and then they see their puppets on the other side. And if it's perfectly in this, I want to say that's an 11 by 14 bag, I'm not sure, right? So this is what I'm talking about, make it unique. And in the course, uh, I'm, I'm putting together some, because uh, uh, I've just started doing some more bundles for Q4, I'm putting together some live, watch me put my bundle together videos, okay? And I'll be adding those, and you have lifetime access to the course, so every time I add something new like this, you'll be able to see it. Oh, book a bed story to bedtime stories for mom, dad. Exactly. I love that you guys are brainstorming in here. Please keep going brainstorming in the chat because I'll save this chat and I'm going to put um, your ideas up on my Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash group slash deal diva. And that way you can, sh uh, your ideas can keep going and keep brain brainstorming. Okay. So I'm going to go back to share screen now that I've explained to you what I mean by make it unique. And that's just one idea, guys. Uh, I, there are all sorts of ways to make your bundles unique that we cover in the Bundle Masterclass. So you want to over-deliver. Didn't I just over-deliver by being, um, being present and being aware of how the customer experience will be when they open the box? That's called over-delivering. Um, okay, so ask the right questions. So you don't want to ask, what can I throw in this bundle to make it look like a bunch of stuff? Amazon is not going to put up with that for any longer. They are, they're not, they're going to start coming down on people who are just, I call it bundle stuffing, just like keyword stuffing, you're bundle stuffing. There was something, I, I forget, it was a, a, 
Um, I ran across this, uh, it's actually in the Bundle Masterclass. We, we did this live webinar where we just went on Amazon looking for bundles to kind of see the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there was one bundle that was like, um, I don't know, it was, a, let's say, a stuffed animal, but then it had something completely unrelated thrown in, like a keychain for, for Mercedes Benz or what, I don't know, I don't know what it was, but completely unrelated. And those it, the item did not at all add value um, it, all they were trying to do is hopefully nobody would jump on their listing. Well, that listing's not, that product's not going to sell long term, and eventually Amazon's going to catch that stuff. And you want to stay within Amazon's terms of service, and you can't do that stuff. Not only is it just wrong for the customer, it's a terrible customer experience, but that's just trying to, like, you know, game the system, and that's not what building a business is about, in my opinion. Okay, yes, here's what you want to ask. Here's the right question. What else does my ideal buyer want or need? And then you just start brainstorming. If I were this person who had a child who loved bedrooms, um, having bedroom stories, bedtime stories read, and I had, you know, and they like puppets. Now I've got bedtime stories, puppets, great keywords, right? Um, what else would that child and would that parent want with that experience, not necessarily with the product, right? So it really comes down to asking the right questions when you're sourcing anything or when you're doing any market research. Get into the minds and the hearts of your target customer. Okay, so next slide. Where to source? I get this question a lot and it flummoxes me because I it's products everywhere, guys. But because you've been trained, when you first entered Amazon, okay? Let me, let me get real here, I'm gonna get back up on my soapbox. We've been trained when we start on Amazon to start with the product, right? And where do we find product and how do we get suppliers to sell to us? And again, that's a valid model. If you add the customer-centric approach tool to your toolbox, then finding the products is secondary because you, once you've identified the types of products you want to put in, you start, Google is your friend. That's another one of my famous quotes. Google is your friend. You start Googling puppet wholesalers puppet suppliers, puppet brand owners, right? And then if you wanted to go to the next level, if this really takes off and I can make it evergreen, not just Q4, then I will have these produced. I will produce my own set of puppets and I'll choose maybe instead of a pig, I'll have a, um, an owl in there because I know that people like the owl image and I can get some leverage off of the owl keyword, for example. Or I might do a niche bundle of farmyard animals and another one of uh, sea animals and then another bundle of... Um, zoo animals or, or savanna animals, right? African animals, right? So I forget what I was going with that, but Google is your friend. How to source products. So you can start, first of all, you can um, register for wholesale accounts with uh, toy companies and well, with the grocery companies, register wholesale accounts and stop following Facebook. I'm sorry, the negativity on Facebook where I see so many people complaining, oh, this, this co company won't sell to me at all, oh, there's no profit in, the pro in their products. Okay, well that's kind of silly because if you're bundling, you can create your own product or a profit, right? If there's too many sellers on, on a product, then you can create a, a similar bundle for that target market. To, so, so don't listen to all the excuses and the negativities on Facebook, that's what I was trying to get at. Um, just decide what it is you wanna do and then follow through with it. Make it happen, and instead of making excuses, make it happen. Hey, I just made that up. So I'm, I'm sure nobody else said that before ever, right? <laughs> okay, so back to the presentation. I do get on my soapboxes, yes. I do it in the course, too. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, so let's get back. Wholesale, China, go to AliExpress. You don't have to go to Alibaba and, and purchase, you know, $10,000 worth of products or a thousand minimum quantity. You don't need to go big to test it. Uh, you go to AliExpress.com and you can test out one. You just buy a dozen of three or four different products to get their, buy one of each just to see their quality and play out, play with different combinations of products in a bundle, right? Um, brand owners who will white label. I have a couple of suppliers where they've got great products and they will, um, one supplier, he, I've white labeled one of his products. So it's it's his product, but he puts it in a blank box for me. We, he puts my label on it, and then I send him two other products from two other sources to put in that box, and then he puts my label on it, and then he puts my Amazon label on it, and then he packs it and ships it to Amazon for me. And he's he's just one of my suppliers. He's like, uh, I, I, I bring some of his products to the Amazon marketplace 
He doesn't, I have an exclusive with him, so he doesn't sell to any other Amazon sellers. His business model is importing and, um, and wholesale. So he doesn't want to know Amazon. And I have, I built this relationship with him so I can take any of the products he has coming in. He's got, I don't know, eight or nine containers coming in. And he gives me a list of Barbara, this is what we got. What do you want? And he gives me great prices and he just basically preps it for me for free. That kind of relationship is not, you know, normal. But because you're building a relationship, because you're, I wanted to see how I could add value to his company before that ever transpired, that relationship sort of worked its way into that over time. But the opportunities are endless for white labeling. If you contact a company that's got a product that you think would be really good for a niche market that you've discovered, then ask them. How can we put my brand on that product? Okay, so local stores, go to dollar stores and just start looking at product. And then um, go to, go to uh, big box stores, and when you find a product that you think is interesting, flip it over, look at the back, find the supplier information and Google it, and contact the supplier. Manufacture it yourself, that's the next level. Like I said, at some point, I may end up, uh, right now there is a product that's taking off for me, uh, that I am now going to go manufacture on my own. It's it's actually a wholesale product, um, but there are a couple things from my supplier. I, I think I, I, they can do a better job on that product, but they're not going to change it for me. So I'm going to go and recreate their product, but make it even better, right? And that will be manufacturing, okay? So anyway, just some ideas for you to think about. Uh, let me pop over to the chat. Do you guys have any questions? Because I know I'm going at breakneck speed. My question is about UPC labels for bundles. Michelle, no such thing anymore. You do not register UPC labels for bundles or private label products. You do something called a GTIN exemption. Uh, there's actually a video on how to do a GTIN ex exemption. Apply for it for all of your bundles. And also a, um, a, a little checklist on how to do it with screenshots of me walking through doing it. And that's in the bundle masterclass. So do not buy UPC codes. Do not do it anymore. It's all about asking Amazon for a GTIN exemption for um, a list of the bundles that you're, you're thinking about creating. Okay. So let's scooch back over here to, let's see where we're at. Where's the source? Okay. So do you guys, um, do you understand, like, the, those are kind of the, the basics of how to get started in bundling, but of course there's a whole lot more nuance and detail to it. So what are the elements of a winning listing? Photos, photos, photos. If you had to invest in one thing and pay somebody to do it really, really well, professional photographer, not just photo shots, product shots, but I just sent this group of, of puppets over to a photographer, and this photographer does these great lifestyle shots. I guarantee you she's going to have her kids playing with the puppets and taking pictures of her kids playing with the puppets, like sitting in bed with a book, with the puppet looking at the book, and the parent, um, and she'll also do Photoshop stuff. Um, with these puppets. I don't know what to expect. Um, she's so creative that I don't give her a lot of direction other than I know that uh, she knows that there are certain requirements for the main image on Amazon. She follows those, but the lifestyle images are what really sell a product, okay? So, and it all starts with keyword research because you've got a list of keyword research in your bundle master planner, right? Now you just copy and paste those over there onto your listings. And then your title is so important. And we talk about the, the specific elements of the title for what Amazon requires and what is going to get you the most juice, putting your most important keywords first in the title, for example. Um, and then bullets and features is the next important part. You want to make sure that you really maximize the space on those five bullet points you get that show uh, uh, above the fold when somebody's looking at a, your listing online. That's the next thing they see after the title. Description, you want to answer the why. So you want to tell a story. So I'll tell a story about, well, why would somebody need these puppets or want these puppets? And what could you do with the puppets? And what feeling will your child have? And what connection will you um, strengthen with your child as you read a bedtime, old-fashioned bedtime story with your children, right? Bring back traditions in your family. Right? So you can write a whole story around your product in the description. And then, of course, your search terms in the back ends, keywords. Okay, I'm going to stop the share and scooch over here because uh, that was what uh, what will that cost you? Uh, not Richard, I'm not sure what you're asking. The GTN exemption is free to um, it, you're just asking for an exemption to use the UPC on bundles. Okay, so uh, I can explain the GTN exemption is best explained in a video. Um, it is new. Uh, it's basically because a lot of people so people were just buying UPC codes off of eBay. 
And Amazon put a kibbutz on that. They said, no more. You now have to actually have official UPC codes registered with, uh, and that costs a lot of money, and that was cost prohibitive for people who were just putting together bundles, maybe seasonal bundles. It didn't make sense. So Amazon fixed that earlier this year, and they said, okay, if you're doing a bundle or if you're private labeling a product and you're, you want to put that on a marketplace, you can ask for an exemption to have a UPC code, basically, on your product. And um, you can download their template, their spreadsheet, look in Seller Central for GTI and exemption. Again, in the Bundle Masterclass, I do an entire video. There's a whole lesson on how to do it, um, plus the templates you can download and fill in, um, plus screenshots of uh, step A, B, C, D. Okay, so we are uh, pretty much covered. Uh, photos, what will photos cost you? Richard, that's uh, something you need to negotiate with a photographer. So it depends on the photographer. Okay, so before we get into the QA, I just want to give you guys a heads up of what's going on this week. As of today, it's officially, officially, officially open the Bundle Masterclass for one week. You have one week to register for the fall semester, and the fall semester starts September 1. Um, and here's my approach to bundling. Know your market before you source anything. Don't go buy stuff. Do not go buy stuff. I want you to spend, if, if you had like, you know, X amount of time to go from A to Z on bringing a bundle market, I want 50% of that time to be in doing your market research. Because in doing that much research up front, you are reducing your risk of your product not selling. So identify passions and problems. Don't focus on the product. Focus on the passions and the problems. Identify your competition. Find out what their holes are. What are they missing out on? What could you do better? Build bundle concepts. So what I mean by that is, um, if I have this one bundle that's doing well with this concept, now I can branch out and I can have, okay, puppets, but let's do different concepts of this bundle. Like I said, I can do a safari bundle um, and a farmyard bundle, and right, and a sea bundle. And basically it's uh, puppets and the target market for people who want to tell bedtime stories to the kids. That would be uh, the concept. And then I bring different products related to that niche. Okay, identify suppliers. After I do all that, then I identify suppliers. And then I can negotiate with the suppliers to get better pricing, lower minimum order quantity, right? And then I want to create a custom piece to go in it. Uh, and this is just one example. I also create um, books, like actual uh, little like saddle-stitched books to go with it. It could be a recipe book. It could be a how-to book. It could be a guide on how to clean your XYZ um, bundle with something that's related to uh, that product. Uh, create a custom piece, test it. So you want to, don't, don't go deep. Don't go sending, you know, don't order a thousand puppets, right? Get the minimum order quantity, test out two or three dozen of them, play with it, tweak it, and then go big after you tested and tweaked it. Um, and then market. You want to do your own marketing because Amazon rewards people who bring outside traffic to Amazon. And they're going to give you some listing love uh, when people search for puppets because I'm bringing people off of Facebook and off of Twitter and off of Instagram and off of Pinterest uh, and off of Reddit, right? I'm bringing new traffic and potential new customers on Amazon. Uh, oh, that's drive your own traffic. I just covered that. And then automate and delegate. So once you get good at this process, once you really get this down, you're going to have a bundled journal with all of these niche product ideas and niche market ideas, and you're not going to have enough time in the day to flush them all out. So we teach you how to automate part of this process, how to automate, how to find suppliers for XYZ products, and how to, how to, uh, how to delegate that, I'm sorry, how to delegate um, somebody else doing the research based on the criteria that you're giving them. And then you just lather, rinse, rinse repeat. So my goal is to have a new bundle every day. Now, I haven't actually gotten to that goal yet, but it's good to have goals. Um, but definitely during Q4, I am bundling up right now. I am, I've got so many bundle ideas that I've got in different stages of completion, uh, and I think you should too. So here's what we're offering. A bundle masterclass course outline. The fall semester starts September 1, but you get lifetime access, so no worries if you can't start on September 1. It's basically a way for me to help you walk through the course so that I can help you learn, implement, learn, implement, learn, implement, so that you're not just left in the wind with, you know, it's a course land on a shelf. I truly want you to be successful. So I, I help you by walking you through in that 30 days. There's also a Facebook group with a lot of, of the, the first 
Um, this is the second semester. Okay, so the first semester Bumble Masterclass students have graduated and they're in that Facebook group and they can help you along too. And you, you can ask questions. We're going to first dive deep into niche market discovery and evaluation. There's an entire module with multiple lessons on um, what I just glossed over in this webinar. Customer needs discovery. I teach you brainstorming tools and then also idea evaluation tools so that you can vet the ideas that you're coming up with against a set of specific criteria so you're not just creating a bunch of bundles without um, really having solid numbers behind it. And then product opportunity discovery. So I'll talk to you about how to find products that maybe you hadn't thought about before um, that will meet the, the passions and the problems of your target market. How to negotiate with suppliers. I talked to you how to, how to negotiate with wholesale suppliers and even local suppliers, right? If you're still doing RA, you could walk into a store and say, look, I will clear your shelf and everything you have in the back and everything you have coming in on a regular basis of this specific product for this discount. And a lot of store owners will be happy to do that for you because it helps them move product to keep them, have them a regular residual in income every month. And we, we talk about a lot of different uh, ninja supplier negotiation tactics in that module. Competition proof your bundle. So the, um, the certificate was just one little idea. I cover tons and tons and tons of ideas. And uh, every time I launch this course, I'll be doing a weekly webinar every single week which is kind of a show and tell of that, that week's module. And um, I will, it will be live show and tell and more ideas will be generated for doing, uh, for competition proofing, proofing your bundle during those live uh, free-for-alls. Okay, know your numbers. It's really important, this is a business. We don't fall in love with our bundles or a niche market. It's all about the numbers. And I show you how to evaluate the numbers um, of search terms and product cost, et cetera, to see if it makes sense for you. Uh, to actually enter that niche market. Listing creation optimization, so important to have. You could drive traffic to, you could have the coolest bundle in the world, but if you don't optimize your listing, nobody will buy it because they get to that listing and they say, huh, I don't understand what I'm buying or why I should buy it. So listing creation and optimization, and like I said, I have some industry um, experts who are way smarter than I am come in during some of these modules like listing creation and optimization and really dig down. In fact, someone was asking in the chat about photography. I actually interviewed Michael Goldberg, who's, um, they have a, a professional photography uh, uh, company for, for Amazon sellers, and he does an entire webinar on how to take life's, uh, really compelling images. Okay, creating sales traction. So how do you get the traction? A lot of these uh, really expensive, like $3,000 private label courses tell you, well, you have to give a bunch of product away, and you have to do X, Y, Z. And there are some ways to get sales traction that don't require losing money, that don't require doing huge pay-per-click campaigns. It requires um, just negotiating with a group uh, the owners of groups of people in your niche market and say, look, I've got this new product. I'd love to give a discount to your group of people. Will you promote it for me? And I'll even give you a, a, um, a, a commission for doing a post for me. Or can I buy an ad in your newsletter? Or there's so many different ways that you can drive traffic uh, um, in order to get sales traction for a product that don't involve the traditional private label, which are all very useful, valuable things to do. But if you're working on a budget and you just put a bunch of money in inventory and you can't afford really expensive ads, then there are other ways to get sales traction on your listings in order to um, start getting reviews and, and start selling more of it. And then automation and delegation is key. After you've learned any process, the next thing you should do is set up whatever can be automated, you should automate. And there are a lot of tools out there to help you automate research, et cetera. And then delegate, how to hire an assistant, a marketing assistant, a research assistant, a virtual assistant. And I interview Ian Bauer in the course as well. And there's an entire webinar from Ian in there about how to find, um, how to find virtual assistants for, you know, five, three to seven dollars an hour in the Philippines to help you delegate some of the research um, that you do when you're, when you're creating um, a niche, okay, or when you're looking, looking for a niche. Okay, so the semester opens September 1. Uh, you get live video lectures, slide presentations, show and tell videos, and here's why I'm doing it in different formats, because I believe, not I believe, people have different learning styles. Some are aud auditory, and some are visual, and some like to read. So I make sure you have checklists and planners and slide presentations that you can read from and show and tells, live show and tells. So it's you looking over my shoulder at me um, giving you an example of this is what I just taught you in this lesson and here's what it looks like when I do it, okay? As well as presentations just like this, live webinars. 
I do interviews with industry leaders, checklists, exercises in every single module to keep you engaged and keep you practicing what you're learning so that you can really um, make it your own, okay? And then we've got a private, private Facebook group. It's not just me in there, but it's master bundlers in there who have been there, done that. Um, they, you can ask questions in there and get feedback from everybody in the group. You get lifetime access. So if you're not ready to start September 1, this is the last opening for this year. And Q4 is three and a half months away. You have time right now to learn how to create bundles and get them into Amazon's marketplace and get traction so that you can get more sales during fourth quarter. Now, I don't, I can't guarantee your financial success because everything is about how, how much you implement um, training that you get, but now is the time to do it. The course closes down and will not open for until next year because I won't have the time during Q4. I'm an active Amazon seller and I'm in there on the trenches with you guys. So I'm working my business as well as training. So revised and updated content every time I add something new, uh, I will add it to the content so you have access to that till the end of days, right? And then you get a printable bundle idea journal. So you can walk around with this journal, uh, you, you keep it in your car, and I'm considering doing a one that you can uh, create, uh, uh, creating one in create space that you can actually get on Amazon and then order that hard copy. I'm working on doing that. I'm not gonna promise it because I'm not sure yet but you will definitely be able to print out your bundle idea journal. So wherever you are, you can just jot down niche market ideas, okay? Okay, so bonuses, you get, so the first 20 people who sign up, this is the first webinar officially announcing the open cart. The first people who register get a private bundle review from me. I will never share your bundle idea or niche market idea with anybody, nor use it myself. The first people who sign up at bumblemasterclass.com will get my private uh, examination of their bundle, their listing, uh, to, and my, um, my feedback on how you can improve it. So trade shows, you get my annual event calendar. Great way to find suppliers for anything is to look at events and, um, and go and find out who is actually, um, who's uh, an exhibitor at the event, and then uh, get an exhibitor list and start asking them what kind of products they sell and what niche markets they're in. The event calendar gives you niche market ideas. Wholesale supplier directory, right out of the gate, I'm gonna give you 100 wholesale sources. I, I don't know how many products each carries, but it's got to be tens of thousands of products combined that you can get niche market ideas from and then have an automatic source to source from these suppliers. Discount off next level seller tools. Every um, invitation, every, every uh, uh, expert in a niche that comes in and does a webinar for us, does a training for us in the course, is required to give a discount on whatever their tool or service is to you guys. This uh, niche market validation checklist, you get a checklist where you can validate, um, where I give you a set of criteria against which to validate a niche market idea. So you're not doing a bunch of uh, further research and product sourcing on a niche market that maybe is not viable from uh, a profit standpoint. Competitor tracking spreadsheet, negotiation checklist, exercise at the end of each module, and a Facebook Live video weekly during September, every single week through the end of September. Okay, so cost of education. I've been selling online since 2002. I'm an active Amazon seller, and I bring all the new knowledge I gain. I just came from e-com commerce. Uh, I'm going to the, an e-com commerce and retail global in the next couple weeks. I'm actually speaking at retail global and I just came from a, a marketing conference uh, three weeks ago on like next level ninja Facebook's marketing strategies, which was insane. My head is still um, just, just mush from it. Uh, all the amazing content and top contacts I made. But every time I take a high level course, I'll bring the application of that knowledge into the Amazon world, how, how it affected my business and how I grew my business with it. I'll bring my insights based on all this training that I'm already paying for into the Bundle Masterclass as it relates to creating bundles. I've purchased tens of thousands of courses, gosh, just in the, this year alone with my China trip, I'm probably $30,000 into my education budget. And, I, and I'm thrilled to do so because I know, boy, my, my university degree costs a whole lot more than that. And I know that I can take that $30,000 in education and networking and turn that around multiple times over when I apply it to my business. So you don't have to incur, incur the cost of buying other $3,000 packages, right? Um, I, I want to bring success through education to the masses. So I have priced this at an extremely reasonable rate. I know you guys have seen private label and wholesale courses up there for upwards of two, three thousand dollars for two ninety nine, two hundred ninety nine dollars. You get into the bundle masterclass. Now that might that price might change 
over time. It might end up going up to the $4.99 price point um, when I open it up in the spring. It really depends on how much time of my time that I have to bring into the course. Right now we're in the second semester, fall semester, $299. First 20 people get a bundle evaluation. You have to register by August 31st, which I believe is next Thursday. Then I shut it down to new students for next year. So um, go ahead and enroll now, bundlemasterclass.com. I'm going to go over and see what we have in the chat here. Um, so the 100 wholesale providers vetted. Michael, I need to, uh, we're going to reword that question. Michael asks, are the 100 wholesale providers vetted? Michael, we're not sourcing from them in order to sell their product directly on Amazon. So we don't approach them as we are Amazon sellers because basically you're going to use their product in your bundle. So it's a completely different mindset. Okay, uh, what is the cost for your course? $299. Um, yes, I record absolutely everything and put it up inside the bundle masterclass. And I always put random stuff in there that I record throughout the day and week that I find and that's not even in the course syllabus. You can see the course syllabus on bundlemasterclass.com. And at the top, you can watch a webinar re replay we did last week with seasonal bundles. And then also at the top, you can see a little bit about my background. This is about your trainer. And then um, if you go under the link course uh, content, you'll be able to see the syllabus for the course. <laughs> okay, so do I offer templates, dialogues to use when talking, calling with suppliers? I absolutely do order checklists on what to ask suppliers. There's a lot of information in the module on um, successfully negotiating with wholesale suppliers that you can actually use if you're sourcing wholesale, if you're building out a private label brand. A lot of the content in the Bundle Masterclass is actually applicable to other parts of your business. If you're and and the way it worked is that I learned wholesale first, and I learned a lot of that. Uh, a lot of that information was applicable to bundling. So that's in the bundle masterclass. So if you're thinking about adding uh, wholesale sourcing to your um, um, to your Amazon business, then a lot of what you're going to learn in the bundle app masterclass will be applicable to approaching wholesale sources. We're not gonna, we're not talking about wholesale sourcing. Um, as a business model, but we are talking about bundling and how that fits into it. Okay, so uh, cost of photos, uh, that's something that you can research on your own. Every photographer is different. You can go to a local tech college. There we go, that offers photography to find a student working in the commercial. That's a great idea. Thank you for sharing. So, hey guys, um, there are a lot of questions in here. And um, bundlemasterclass.com and if you came in through to this webinar through uh, somebody whose group that you're in um, like Bob Willie right Bob Willie was posting a lot of information about the bundle masterclass make sure that you click through his link because I am um, giving the promoters of this event a little bit of love for helping me bring people from their tribe into my tribe so go back to the group that you found that link in um, and it'll link over the bundlemasterclass.com you can look at the syllabus you can watch the webinar. I'm going to put the replay of the webinar up on that website tonight. By tomorrow morning, it will be up because I have to like do some technology stuff. But have you got any questions? Uh, yes, Michael Lanigan. I believe it is a great price. Uh, I've paid upwards of three thousand dollars for um, a private label course. There's a wholesale courses for two thousand dollars out there. I was going to initially price this at four ninety nine. I decided to bring this to the masses, get as many people owning their listing as possible for a reasonable price so you have money left over to go source products. $299, I think, is an amazing deal. Uh, again, that may change next year to $499 is probably where I'm headed for the price of this course. But right now, $299 for the fall semester, sign up by August 31st, then the shopping cart closes, and we get started. Again, you have lifetime access, so when you register right now for the Bundle Masterclass and you can't start on September 1, that's okay. You can go, to, go through the course at your own pace and learn at your own pace. So if you have any questions, you've got lifetime access to the course, uh, go ahead and post it in my Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash Deal Diva. And I'll put that in the chat here so you can copy it and paste it. And I will put these questions that you guys have asked up on the Deal Diva Facebook group, and then I will answer them in the chat so we can have a great conversation about it. Um, so go ahead and go to Deal Diva, and um, oh, I just made that private. Sorry about that, but it's uh, facebookcom slash Deal Diva or slash group slash Deal Diva, and we're going to send everybody 
And hopefully that worked. Nope, still going privately. Somebody put that in there for me. I'm not quite sure. Oh, goodness. Um, yeah, okay. So go to facebook.com slash group slash deal diva. Go to bundlemasterclass.com. Get in. Um, any Are people who did not buy the course allowed to be in the Facebook group? No, I'm sorry because there's a lot of content, Anita, in the Facebook group that is specific to the Bundle Masterclass. I'm sorry about that, but the Facebook private Facebook group is so valuable in this course because there's so much added value content in there. Uh, if I couldn't let you in and be fair to the people who are actually buying the course. But $299 for this, think about the, the amount you paid for your college degree that you would pay for, I know somebody doing uh, a, a retreat for I think like $8,000. For $299, you get this course that you get lifetime access to that covers a bunch of information on niche market research, on uh, negotiating with wholesalers that you can use across the board, on private labeling, on keyword research, that you can, a lot of this information you can apply to other areas of your Amazon business. So the information you're gonna learn on optimizing listings does not just apply to your bundle listings. You can apply it across the board to all of your listings regardless of how you source the product. So go to bundlemasterclass.com. Thank you for posting that in there, Lisa. I appreciate it. Go to facebook.com slash group slash deal diva to ask more questions. And I will definitely see you guys um, in the Facebook groups. And I hopefully I will see you in the Bundle Masterclass. So go ahead and register. And I will talk to you guys later. I'll post this replay up for you shortly. Talk to you soon. Bye.